Now, if you're like most people on Linux, you probably have some sort of graphical environment installed, and along with that, some sort of image viewer installed as well. But did you know that you don't necessarily need the image viewer because you can view images directly within your terminal. Now I'm not talking about doing things like W3M or Uberzug images because those rely very heavily on the terminal actually supporting that feature. For example, ST doesn't actually support W3M images. I think it supports Uberzug ones, but I'm not 100% sure. But instead of doing that, what you can do instead is generate image previews with things like Unicode blocks, Unicode Braille, and ASCII symbols, along with a bunch of other symbol types as well. And I've looked at a program in the past that will help us do this called Terminal Image Viewer. And today, we're going to be looking at another one, and this one is far more popular, and this one is called Chaffer. Now, if you never saw my video on Terminal Image Viewer, you might not really know how good these images can actually look. And the GitHub page doesn't really do a good job of showing this off either, but trust me, when we get to that point, you'll be really surprised by what your terminal is actually capable of. Now, I'm not going to spend much time talking about the installation process because on most distros, it'll just be available within your standard repo. So on Arch Linux, you can go sudo pacman s and then just install chaffer. And as you can see, it's a pretty small package. So if that's something that you're worried about, then it's not going to be too big of a deal. So get that installed and then we can go and test it out. I'll show you what the GIF renders look like in just a bit. But first up, I want to show you what the regular image renders look like now. One thing you have to keep in mind whenever you're working with any of these terminal graphics programs is the higher your font size is, the lower the resolution of the image is actually going to be. So if I was to echo out the number of columns on my terminal, as you can see, I have 72 columns. So what that means is that from this point here to this point here, you can basically show 72 characters. And a character in this case is basically being used as what amounts to being a metapixel. Now, what I mean by a metapixel is unless your image is really low resolution, so it's only 72 pixels wide, each of the characters in the output will represent a block of pixels within your original image. So the more of these blocks you have, the closer it can be to actually representing a single pixel. And the obvious way to get more columns in your terminal is to just decrease your font size. So if we just run this now, I don't know if you can read that properly, but now there is 117 columns and if we make it even smaller, now there is 234. So let's actually have a look at what this output is going to look like. So if I just go into my pictures directory and I'm going to be using this picture right here. So as you can see, it looks okay. You can kind of work out that it is an image, but it doesn't really look that great. And if we were to make the font even bigger, and as you can see, as we make the font bigger, it will eventually break the image because the image is being generated for the current font size, for the current terminal size. So if it goes above that, then it's going to start looking a little weird. And it also will look a little weird if you go in the other direction as well. Now, obviously with such a small image, you can't really tell that it's looking weird. But for the larger image sizes, it is kind of noticeable. I might show you that in just a bit. Anyway, if we just run it like this, as you can see, the image starts to look a little bit worse and make it even bigger and it looks even worse now. You can still kind of work out that there is something going on in this image, but it's not as clear as where we started from. So let's go in the other direction now. So let's just make it a little bit bigger than the original version. So run it like this. And as you can see, it's considerably clearer now, but it's still, it's still not great. You can still very much work out that it's using Unicode blocks, especially in some of the high detail sections over here, or also in some of the very thin sections with the hair right here. So let's make it even bigger then. Let's go to the smallest size possible by my terminal. And we run that again. And if you've never seen the original image before, you might be convinced that this is being shown in an image viewer. And we can make this even bigger by just going full screen on my terminal and run this again. And as you can see now, obviously, depending on the sort of hardware you're using, it's going to take a very different amount of time. But if you look at it now, if you've never seen the original image before, you could probably be convinced that this was actually being shown in an image viewer. So in case anyone is curious, the terminal I'm using is Alacrity, and because I'm using Alacrity, it has GPU rendering. So my GPU is an RX 570, I'm pretty sure, and my CPU is an AMD 3600X. So if I was running this on my older laptop, this would not be as quick. It would actually take maybe two or three minutes to generate this image because this is a very, very high resolution image and Chaffer isn't a hardware friendly way of generating images. Obviously, if you have an image viewer, then use the image viewer. It'll look way better and it'll render way quicker, but it is really cool that this is actually possible within a terminal. And for anyone curious, this is what the image would actually look like in a proper image viewer. There is a bit of noticeable difference. So 
as you can see, I don't know if it comes up too well on the YouTube video, but especially on the eyelashes here, there is a bit of noticeable drop in quality, and especially on some of these diagonal lines here, there is a bit of noticeable degradation in quality. So if we go back over here, obviously this looks pretty much crystal clear now. You might be able to tell a bit of a difference, especially in the eyelashes here, and as I said, in a lot of the diagonals, because obviously diagonals are a weird one to show, because there's so much variation in the actual angles, it's very difficult to approximate that, even if you're using things alongside the Unicode blocks, such as ASCII characters and Unicode Braille, but it's still gotten fairly close, especially on some of the angles. Like this one right here, this looks really good. This one right here also looks really good. But then there's other ones where there's a noticeable problem. It surprisingly does fairly well on the curves. So if you look at some of the pedals here, you can't even really tell that there's a problem here. Granted, this pedal is intentionally blurred, so it also does help there. But even if you look at some of the curves in the hair, they still look fairly good. Now, the bottom curve here is not as good, but for the same reason why diagonal is a bit of a problem, curves can also be a bit of a problem as well. Now, one of the things that helps to make this image look so good is the fact that it's in true color, but a lot of terminals don't actually support this. So let's just zoom in a bit and we'll have a look at the options. So man chaffer, and there's a bunch of different things we can set in here. Now, I'm not going to go through every single option here, but we will play around with some of them. And one of the ones I did want to play around with is the color mode, because a lot of the other options, they kind of rely on the color mode to actually make a difference, because a lot of them are things like dithering, which on true color, dithering doesn't really make any sense. I'll explain what dithering is in just a bit, but first up, let's have a look at the actual color mode. So by default, it'll try to use whatever the maximum thing your terminal can support. So in my case, that'll be full color, but we can actually force it into a lower color mode as well. So let's just use the exact same image we just saw before, but this time change the color mode down to, let's go all the way down to two color mode. And as you can see, this will be in black and white now. Now, obviously you can still make this image look pretty good. We run it like this. And it's a really good looking black and white image, but it's still a black and white image, obviously. But instead, let's raise it up to something that is more reasonable on a modern terminal. So we'll do 256 color for the rest of this video. So there's clearly some level of color degradation in this actual image. But if we were to zoom out all the way again, it's not as bad as you would expect. With 256 colors, it still looks pretty good. And the reason why I picked this image is because it's full of gradients. So there's gradients on the face, there's gradients in the background, there's gradients on the butterfly. This image was intentionally picked to make it really hard on anything that isn't using true color. And this is where a lot of the other options are gonna come into place. So by default, the color space is set to RGB. Now RGB is really quick, but the problem with it is it's not really that accurate. So let's actually change it over to a different color space. So as we can see, we have the color space option right here. So if we just do dash dash color dash space, and then set this from being RGB to being DIN 99D. So we'll zoom all the way back out. And if we run it again, now it's arguable about whether this looks better. On this image, it does look worse. It's obviously closer to what the actual image does look like, but in some places it's noticeably worse, especially in the hair. The hair isn't supposed to be this blue color. The background kind of completely falls apart. There's a lot of grays being used here. So for this image in particular, it doesn't look better. I would say the other version does look a bit better, but for some images, using DIN 99D might end up actually looking a bit better than the RGB version did. But that doesn't mean this option is completely useless on this image. What we can do is we can combine it with another option. So we can combine it with dithering. So if you don't know what dithering is, there's a Wikipedia article that does a pretty good job of explaining it. But basically what it does is adds random noise into the image. Now you might be wondering, well, why would random noise be a good thing? So let's just zoom all the way in and add dithering in. So if we just run the image like this, it looks kind of garbage. And this time we add some dithering in. So dash dash dither and let's just use, it doesn't really matter what type we're gonna use, they're kind of all fairly similar at this size. Diffusion, and as you can see, the image looks way worse, and we keep zooming in again, and we run it again, and it still looks way worse. But one thing you might notice is the colors look a little bit closer to what they were in the original image. So what would happen if we were to use dithering and also zoom out a bunch? So let's zoom all the way out and run it with dithering and see what's actually gonna happen. As you can see, it looks way better than it did before, and there's a good reason for that. So if we look over here, basically what dithering can be used for is to approximate colors when those colors don't exist within your color space. 
So in this case, it's approximating greys when the only colours that are available are black and white. And in this case over here, we're approximating things like the hair colour when we don't have anything in our colour palette that will actually let us use that colour. But I do still think the RGB version does look a little bit better, so let's switch over to that version. My main reason for that is I don't like how all of the background up here has just been pretty much turned to grey. I'd much rather it just be the white and then the rest of the colour be slightly off. So let's, let's just change this back to being RGB. So get rid of this right here and then make sure that's still set to diffusion mode. Zoom all the way back out and run it again. So as you can see, this looks really close to what we had with the original image, but we can make this even better. So what we can do is we can actually change the size of the dither grains. So by default, each of the dither grains is going to be set to four pixels. So if we want to make them smaller, that means we would actually have more of the dither grains and it would get much closer to what the original colors actually looked like. So we'll run that option now. So dash dash dither dash grain, and then set it to one and then zoom all the way back out again. And as you'll see, there's going to be a bit more noise in the image, but the colors are going to look considerably better. And one other thing we can do is we can change the dithering intensity. And the dithering intensity is basically the amount of variation in the dithering pattern. So if we were to change that option now, so dash dash dither dash intensity, and by default, I think it is set to one. So let's set it all the way to 10, because in the man page here, it says anything greater than 10, you're unlikely to produce any useful results. So let's zoom all the way back out again and see what it's gonna look like now. So this right here is pretty much as close as you can get to the original image without using true color. So we can make this even bigger and it will look slightly better as well. As you can see, there's obviously a lot more noise. You can see lots of like yellows and reds and greens that obviously aren't actually within this section of the image if you were to render in a proper image view, but when you combine them into one big image, it actually produces a really, really good result. And I don't know if this is a thing outside of Australia really, but in Australian schools, we had this thing where we would make like an image of some person's face and it would be a combination of everyone's faces in the school or something like that. And dithering works in basically the same sort of way. So even though if you were to take an individual section of the image, it would look nothing like what the rest of the image should look like. So for example, I don't know how well it shows up, but there is a yellow dot here and there is obviously not a yellow dot in the original image. So this small section of the image wouldn't represent the rest of the image whatsoever. But when you average it out across all of the pixels in the surrounding region, it looks very close to what the color should actually be. So, so it's kind of tricking your eyes in a way into making you think that there's a color there, when in reality, it's really just an optical illusion. Which I honestly think is actually really cool. Now, one other thing you can do to change the quality of the image is to mess with which symbols are gonna be used. But when the image is this large, there's not really any difference to be seen there. So if you want to make the image smaller, so it, to something a bit more reasonable like this, switching up the different types of symbols you can use actually will affect the quality of the image. But when you've zoomed out so far that every single symbol looks like an individual pixel, there's not really any difference to be seen there, at least from the images that I've tested. I guess I should also show you what the GIF renders will look like as well. So I'm not gonna go back over things like dithering or color spaces because all of the stuff I just went over will apply the exact same way to the GIFs. So if I just run this right here, as you can see, because my font is so large, the resolution is pretty low. So if I was to zoom out a bit and then restart the GIF, as we zoomed out, the resolution increased. But one thing you will notice is it is increasing in the screen tearing and there's a very good reason for that. So we zoom out a bit more and the screen tearing gets worse and the GIF on the first run at least is fairly slow to actually render. So the reason why there's so much screen tearing is because to actually draw each frame of the GIF, and as you saw how long it took to draw the image with the static image, for a GIF, it has to do that for every single frame of the GIF. So a higher frame rate GIF will end up having a higher rate of screen tearing. And obviously this will also depend heavily on the original resolution of the GIF as well. So a lower resolution GIF will render quicker when you convert it, and a higher resolution GIF will render slower as you convert it. One fun thing you can do is actually mess with the frame rate of the GIF as well. So if we just run the GIF again, but this time instead give it the speed option, and let's just set the speed to 60. So that would be 60 FPS. Now this GIF obviously isn't a 60 FPS GIF because otherwise <laughs> this wouldn't be happening right now. So let's just lower it down all the way to five or something like that. And that actually is even higher than it originally was anyway. So I don't know what the original GIF was, maybe one? Maybe it was two or something like that. So obviously if you lower the frame rate, this will give the terminal more time to redraw the image as well. So if you still want it to be an animated GIF, 
you could lower the frame rate and this will actually reduce the amount of screen tearing that does happen. So if we just run that again, there is significantly less screen tearing than there was before. There is still obviously a bit because there's only so much you can do. This can be addressed by having faster and faster hardware, but there will be a point where there is just diminishing returns. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. Now, obviously, this isn't the most efficient way to generate image previews. There's way, way quicker ways to do this. Just use a regular image viewer. But it is really cool that if you're not in a graphical environment, you can still view your images. So say if you're stuck in a TTY for whatever reason, you can still view an image like that with a program like Chaffer or a program like Terminal Image Viewer. You're not limited just because you don't have a graphical environment, which I think is actually really, really cool. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim Nathan, Andrew Montezar, Peter D. Rode, Tony Donald Ocularia, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also remember to check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.